Hi, and welcome to the Your Good News podcast with me, Catherine Getty. It's easy to believe the news around us that the world is dark and the future is the same. But what if we chose something different? What if we chose to find the good news in each day? This podcast is a collection of interviews with friends, mentors, colleagues on their good news. From business to health to politics and everything in between, it's my hope that you leave with a boost and find your good news. Pretty excited for this week's episode with Andy Kaiser. Andy is a principal at a consulting and communications firm called Navigators, and is a former senior staffer on Capitol Hill, where he had some pretty cool roles, including at House Intelligence Committee, where he became something of an expert on cybersecurity and technology. Andy is a wealth of knowledge, and we dive into the impacts of technology, both positive and the ones we probably should think about a little bit more. This episode is thought-provoking, and I can't wait for you to hear, without further ado, my interview with Andy Kaiser. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Your Good News podcast. Andy, I was able to set up your background in the intro, so let's get started. I begin by asking every guest, what's your good news this morning? Yeah, good morning, Catherine. Great to be on with you. Uh, Let's see. Well, it's a beautiful fall day in the nation's capital. Heck yeah. Uh, One of the best uh, times of year, right? Um, Not so scorchingly hot. So (laughs) my kids are back in school full time. Five days a week. So what better news could there be than that? That is very exciting. It's hard to believe uh, for everyone listening to this. We're, we're recording in October of 2021. It's sort of crazy. Like sometimes I think back and like, how have we lived over the last 16 months? It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And for people with kids, it's like you've had to have to get someone to cover your child care from 1230 to three on Tuesday. And it was all, it was all very the Tetris that was happening for everyone is, I don't know how we all did it, but we did it. We figured it out, right? <laughs> right. I'm sure we're better for it in some respects. But. I'm, I'm sure. And I'm sure that your kids had to use technology to learn. So we're going to delve into this topic, technology and innovation. I feel yeah. like even saying those words, they're very buzzy right now. It's got people's kind of minds racing. And the pre-show prep you noted that in spite of what you hear in the news on social media, profits from doom, gloom, and crisis, technology, and innovation have made our lives better and easier. And I really connected with this concept. I think there's some good, there's so much good in technology and how it's connecting people. What do you think the biggest impact has been um, for you personally? And how has that kind of shifted your mindset when you show up? Yeah, well, in my line of work, uh, one of the things I get to work on is, is sort of these, these tech issues, which, which I do think are so cool. And sometimes we, we forget how much they've changed our lives, right? Last night, uh, my wife and I are, are sitting at the dinner table, not seeing uh, many options in the pantry. We fire up Uber Eats and we get <laughs> delicious Toki Underground uh, delivered to our doorstep, uh, you know, in 45 minutes. And just the concept of that, of course, you know, even 10 years ago, uh, you know, would, would not have existed. Um, you can order almost anything on planet Earth from your the phone in your pocket and, you know, have it delivered uh, to your doorstep in, in two, one, or sometimes even the same it's, day. It's uh, wild. It's, it's really as- astonishing. And, and, you know, I think about things in, in the, on the health side where we've uh, you know, innovated three incredible, effective vaccines that have gotten you know life back to some some normalcy post COVID in, in this extraordinary timeline um, that have been very effective. You know, are we're living longer, right? Even just a hundred years ago, uh, the average life expectancy was in the fifties. Um, you know, and now we're we're in the low low eighties. Um, a little different between men and women, of course, but, um, you know, just how far we've come, I think it's important to have some perspective, uh, some sense of history about what people in other countries are facing and the challenges they're facing. So not to say that we don't have challenges here in the U.S., but when we consume ourselves with the negative or what we don't have, 
you know, obviously that's easy to do, but I, I think uh, it's easier to be an optimist, which you certainly are, Catherine, and, and I admire that, um, when you have, again, some, some sort of sense of history, some perspective on what folks around the world uh, are, are dealing with. And then, of course, we have things to work on here, and we can focus on those, but my goodness, let's appreciate, you know, what we have. I think it's what I'm hearing you say is we take a lot of things for granted. And I know some days, you know, you're like, I'm, you know, I get annoyed that like the Uber says it's going to take two minutes longer than it's going to actually take. And it's like, oh, I just ordered a phone without calling a, a pa- you know, taxi dispatch, um, waiting and hoping that they showed up. I remember those days when I moved to D.C. and I was like, I have to call a taxi dispatch to hope that I can get to the airport in time. And now we have reliable, dif- different options. There's a, a stand-up comedian has a hilarious bit about this. And um, to, to your comment, he's, he says, uh, you know, he's the same thing. He's ordering an Uber and it, it takes a minute or there's some buffering going on or, you know, whatever delay. And he says, give it a second. It's going to space. <laughs> <laughs> it really is astonishing, uh, you know, the, the communications platforms we have. Um, you know, and a lot of people think this is just the, the, the beginning sort of of the internet age, right? That maybe, you know, to use a, a poor analogy, but maybe if, if the, the history of, of the internet and where this connectivity takes us is a hundred yard football field, maybe we're only on like the two yard line, like just getting started. mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, when you think about it, even just in the last 20 years, I remember my first you know, email account when I was a freshman at Michigan State and what, what, why do I need this? You know, what, how, how would I ever possibly use this? And, you know, fast forward um, to where we are today and just the ubiquitous nature of technology in, in our lives. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I think about even like, as I like got it this morning, it's like my phone was my alarm. Like I use the GPS to get, you know, to and from places. Like, Technology, I mean, my coffee maker, thank God, you know, thank God for the coffee maker. Like there's all these different things that are now like, you know, technology that you're like, wow, I take it for granted a lot. Do you think though, you know, just kind of stepping back to technology has impacted kind of human connections so much. You think about, you know, buzzwords of Facebook, Instagram. When I, when I was growing up, it was, you know, MySpace. I thought that was the weirdest thing in the world. Um, do you think, though, that there are things we should keep in mind um, to ensure that we're having a human connection beyond the Internet realm? I feel like sometimes I see my friends at a dinner table and we're all together and it's like they're scrolling. I'm like, hi, we're all right. here. Right. Humans here. <laughs> yes, that's a good point, obviously. You know, I think it's like anything else. If you do it in moderation, you know, it's, it can be a huge, huge value. But if it consumes your life. You know, it's it's maybe like like drinking or something else, right? If you know, have a have a glass of wine with dinner, no problem. If you're you're binge drinking and miss, missing work the next day, now we have a problem, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, exercising that moderation. Um, but you mentioned the connections that that are brought. Um, you know, I think obviously the COVID situation really brought that to light. Where like you and I are doing now, we can easily see each other um it's not the same as in person but i can see you nodding or scowling (laughs) down or i get to see uh you know the lovely cat on screen uh from time to time (laughs) nancy Uh, nancy reagan of course nancy is uh you know bringing me joy which none (laughs) none of this we would see if we were doing over the phone of course so just just these connections you know, the whole FaceTime platform is another thing that is, is really astonishing, literally from Jetsons, right? Um, in decades ago where, you know, somebody could possibly fathom that you could have a video conference with somebody from the phone in your pocket or from your watch. Um, and we it's... do that all the time now, right? My, um, we do it with my in-laws, we do it with our parents to connect with our kids when maybe they would only otherwise see them you know once or twice a year now they can check in after their first day of school they can see how the first soccer practice went you I know mean, all of these things were not really those possible. moments yeah and again maybe we're just at the sort of precipice of even bigger things which i think is exciting it's exciting and you think about my brother loves star trek and i remember like uh 
Captain Kirk, he had like it wasn't like an Apple Watch, but it was like he like talked through it. They like didn't even think of cell phones. Like there wasn't even like that wasn't even an idea. Now, you know, we're on iPhone 13 in what 15 years. Like I look at the first iPhone and I'm like, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. All my friends that had it, I was like, I am jealous. But now it's like changing all the time. I mean, I think the speed at which technology is also changing is marvelous. I mean, vaccines being developed and like in our arms within a year, like we didn't think that was possible. What do you think is like, if you could crystal ball, what do you think's on the precipice to come out and change kind of our lives? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, there's probably the more interesting things are the things that, that we wouldn't think of sitting here don't know about which um you know obviously we can't game those out because we can't even imagine what the future yeah. <laughs> um but you know the obvious ones are things like autonomous vehicles right that'll that'll be a, a, a big game changer where um you know perhaps after uh a night at the bar you uh push a button and it gets you home instead of maybe making a bad decision or yeah do along the way um and that's I mean, you know, Tesla is awfully close uh, now. So, you know, that's, I think, going to happen, you know, in our lifetime for sure. And then things like, you know, remote medicine, you know, maybe having, instead of having an Alexa assistant in your house, maybe you'll have, you know, a little robot. I, I see Amazon is selling those now. Well, for $1,000? I'm like, yeah, I don't exactly. know if I want a robot running around my house quite yet. We could bring you another, you know, you might need another <laughs> cup of coffee right now. You know. <laughs> I probably, I probably do. I probably do. I think it's just so, um, what I'm really taking away from this conversation is like the importance of perspective and how oftentimes we kind of get wrapped up in our days and may it be about technology or be about, you know, the politics of the day or that conversation you had. It's like taking a step back to really either appreciate the connections you have or figure out kind of how you can be a better participant of society. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I mean, I do think, you know, again, I'm, I am an optimistic person. I think, you know, everyone here uh, in the U.S. was sort of already born on third base, to use another bad sports analogy, right? Like, you look around the world, or just the history of human beings um, are often very difficult circumstances. Um, the idea that we have a say in our own government, that we actually do yeah. have rights that are protected, not to say that um, that has always been distributed evenly or that, you know, I didn't have certain advantages growing up that others may not have had. I mean, my, you know, my, my mom, both of my parents didn't graduate from college. You know, my mom worked in restaurants, my dad worked in factories, but we were part of, you know, sort of they could, they could achieve the American dream still doing that and their kids could be better off than they were. My sister and I both went to college, we got student loans and paid them back. Um, and somebody, you know, when I was 16, took a chance on me and gave me a, a car loan. And I remember at the time thinking, wow, how amazing our society is that this kid who, you know, is a cook part time and, uh, you know, at a restaurant waiting tables sometimes, like this bank is going to take a chance on me and give me whatever it was at the time, $4,000 or something. So I could uh, buy a, you know, dumpy used car, you know, just, just the, in a lot of places that's not possible, right? I mean, just to use a, a another example about our, our rights and freedoms here and in other places. I mean, there's 69 countries in the world where it's against the law to be gay. They're in Afghanistan. They're shopping off people's hands again who have uh, been caught stealing something, right? So just the sense that, you know, this is a special place. Yeah. Obviously, we have our bumps and bruises and our warts um, in areas we need to improve on always. And that's the great part about America is we have that opportunity to do that, um, not to gloss over our, our, our foibles. But again, I, I think we do have to keep, keep where we are and in, you know, sort of the history of human civilization in some perspective uh, when we think about, you know, maybe how, how bad we have it or you know, this group has a grief, that group. Well, at least here we have a chance to hash that out, talk it out. Yeah. Leaders who will advance, you know, issues that we care about. Um, and if we don't like them, we can toss them aside. And that's another thing that 
you know, I do think we, we take for granted here. There's still, I mean, it's, you know, 2021, there's a lot of places on planet Earth where the leaders in charge give two hoots what anybody thinks about what they're doing. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I think it's so interesting. It's like a reminder that we have a willingness to change and a willingness. I hope, you know, my hope is that you've seen in American history is that we have kind of, sometimes it's very slow and not as fast as it should be, have taken that chance to make it a better, you know, this experiment that's lasted over 200 years, like we're pretty lucky to, to call it home. And, you know, you're, it sounds like, and I know this, you're a student of history. Are there things that you, you know, besides kind of the rights and the different opportunities that we have in this country, are there different things that kind of impact the way you view how technology is affecting us or how we're kind of showing up each day now more than ever? Yeah, I do think our system here, which, you know, the positive and the negative is, right, you're, you're free to do as well as you can, and you're also kind of free to fail with a basic safety net, right? We don't have communism that would, you know, take all the inputs and divide and try to divide them up. Yeah. People doing the dividing happen to take a little more for themselves than anybody else gets. Um, but because of that, the upside of taking risk is we're, we're probably the most innovative uh, uh, society, certainly, maybe since the Romans. I mean, the innovations that come out of the United States, certainly in the last century, are really just astounding. And I do think our system you know, lends itself better uh, here uh, than other places around the world, where, again, sort of that, that freedom to succeed, willingness to take a risk. You know, again, we do have a, a social safety net if, if, you, if you fail, but um, we don't have this sort of, you know, we don't punish success as much or, you know, I hope, I hope we don't going forward. And we don't want everybody to be mediocre. We, we want to have our Steve Jobs. We want to have our Bill Gates. These are you know, incredible innovators who literally can change the planet with their innovations. And if we stifle or punish or, you know, make it so hard that they're just not even willing to roll those dice, um, we're really going to, you know, going to hurt our ability over time to uh, have those types of impacts. And I, I think we don't see those in, in, you know, obviously around the world, people will have innovations, but I just don't think it's the same scale as of this system that allows us to flourish here. Do you think, um, you know, thinking about the successes of America, there are obviously a lot of countries around the world that are innovating as well. Do you think that that is something that will kind of be the next frontier of how you kind of measure a country is how they're innovating or their access or, I mean, I feel like access is still kind of troublesome in a lot of places. Like, I'm thinking like China, Russia, like, are they kind of thinking about tech as the next frontier? Yeah, I think so. Right. So a hundred years ago, um, you know, it was all kind of about manufacturing output and, you know, how many X, Y, or Z widgets could we make or in wartime, how many tanks could we make? Well, maybe now it's more like, you know, who's going to be the first person to send someone to Mars? Who's going to get, you know, a regular Joe Schmo on the moon, which is another astonishing thing that we have had recently where regular human beings are traveling just, in space. I mean, just unthinkable. So, yeah, I think, I think there is this tech competition, which is exciting, actually. I, you know, the, so the Chinese sent a, a rover to Mars uh, shortly thereafter uh, we did. And I think this sort of uh, competition is exciting. It makes all of us sharper and better. And, you know, one, one thing I think people don't realize as a Floridian, I'm sure you do, is the uh, space race wasn't just about getting a man on the moon. It's really the innovations that, that came out of that, just doing, doing things that are extraordinarily difficult to pull off scientifically and technologically have second and third and fourth order consequences or, you know, positive consequences um, that that grow out of that um, and, and can change the world in better places. Obviously, not everybody is going to be going to the moon, but uh, the technology that was created to get us there, everyone is using today. 
And you know, one of one of my favorite stats that I that I've read is the iPhone in your pocket has more computing power than uh, than the first mission uh, to uh, to the moon. So um, that's wild. Yeah, these the, the level of technology and information <laughs> that we all have access to, you know, a lot of times that doesn't even cost any money or is very accessible for everyone um, is really astonishing. Yeah. And I think it's kind of a two part question. So you can tackle it together or you can, you can separate them out. So thinking about the technology that has trickled down, I think it's definitely impacted. Like I know for my niece and nephew, my niece is three. She knows how to work an iPad probably better than I do at this point. That's a scary thing for me, but um, how do you think that that's impacting, you know, kids and how they learn, but also for those who don't have access to it, I think there continues to be an access gap and in internet or the ability you think back last to last year, like when I grew up, there was one computer in my house and there was sort of an expectation from go to have a lot of computers and have all this connectivity and Wi-Fi. So kind of how does it impact our kids and what do we do for those folks who still aren't? able to access it. Yeah, it, it is it is a concern and there's uh, there's definitely studies that show uh, too much screen time can be harmful to anyone, right? Uh, including adults who doom scroll at night. <laughs> the doom scrolling uh, is bad. I got I've had some friends I'm like you got to stop scrolling at 11 p.m. There's nothing good. There's nothing right. good. No, just turn on Catherine's podcast. <laughs> read a book, turn off, uh, turn off the phone, turn off the TV. Yeah. No, it's, you know, again, sort of like anything else, I do think it needs to be in, in moderation. Um, too much can be a bad thing for sure. And then, uh, yes, on the access piece, we need to ensure our society and civilization, you know, globally even have, have access to that connectivity because we all rely on it so much, right? So we're, you know, we mentioned to get uh, dinner delivered to um, pick up an Uber, you need that connectivity, but you also need it to do your banking. You need it to, yeah. do, you know, to access, to call 911. You need, you need that connectivity. I do think that's um, becoming so important for, for everyone to have. And, and you're right, there are spots, um, you know, even in the U.S. Where, where that is problematic, though. I think policymakers on, on both sides are, are very keen on yeah. trying to close that gap. I mean, just in our school alone, I know, um, you know, they... They were very good, actually, about trying to make sure everybody had a device, trying to make sure everybody had that connectivity. Obviously, if you didn't have an internet connection and school was online. Yeah, that's... Uh, and I think, you know, even some of the telecom companies um, donated hotspots or other things to try to get people connected. Um, so it's, it's certainly an issue. I do think there's a lot of interest in, in trying to address it, but you're absolutely right if if folks, you know, rely on these technologies, they sure have that uh, access to them or else they're going to just yeah. and what we want to achieve. Yeah. And that just, I feel like, would create almost like a, I hate to use, but caste system of like, if you do have it or you don't have it. And it's, it's a kind of a scary concept is as we get faster and faster, it's like making sure no one gets left behind and ensuring we kind of help those folks. So we also discussed the idea of uh, perspective when it comes to technology and innovation. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of wrapping, I'm, I'm bringing this one home. So are there days that you think, you know, we lose sight of the impact of technology and kind of live in that gloom and doom narrative? Um, and what would you get, say to folks to kind of pull them out? I do. And it- you know, for your listeners who happen to catch uh, some of the uh, Facebook whistleblowers, either congressional testimony or 60 Minutes interview, you know, Facebook's own data, their own research um, shows that people engage more with hateful, angry content. Yeah. And for them, that's good. Engagement means more time on the platform, which means more opportunities to sell ads, which means more money, which means a better day for their shareholders, which is their fiduciary responsibility to try to make money. That is what private companies do. And I think it's incumbent on us to realize this. I'm sure you do. I I discussed this with my own family is like, and, and tele- frankly, television is is not particularly different. You know, it's, mm-hmm. oh no, <laughs> whether you prefer to watch 
Fox News or MSNBC, I try to discuss this with, with my family carefully. I just want folks to understand they are, particularly the opinion uh, news programs, are intentionally trying to get you riled up so mm-hmm. that you watch. If they're just talking about, you know, oh, Congress did something on a bipartisan basis. Yeah, <laughs> you never along, hear about that. Well, guess what? You're going to change the channel and they're going to lose that advertising revenue. So that all of their incentives are to get you upset and to get you yelling at the TV, which a lot of us can do if we turn that on. <laughs> so um, social media is no, is no different. And in fact, it's, it's worse because it's scientific and there's literally an algorithm behind it that is just pushing yeah. information to you. And I think it's just really important for people to understand that it's, you know, whether that needs to change or not, or it's going to, I think it's a different question. It's just, if you have a basic level of understanding of what is happening, why is my information flow look like this? You know, number one, probably turn off, off the TV yeah. or just limit it, right? Don't just sit there and watch for four hours and get, get mad at the other side. And then on the social media front, you know, maybe don't engage with that angry content or maybe unfollow things that make, that make you upset. Um, you know, I, I try very hard to, you know, curate what I see really in life and social yeah. media and in media to something that is, is positive. You know, I want to know what's happening in the world. I'm not trying to okay. shelter myself, but I, I also don't want to spend my time getting mad at somebody. You know, I think life is very short. We all have examples of someone going too quickly or, you know, and I, I just can't imagine somebody on their deathbed sitting thinking, man, I wish I spent more time getting mad at somebody else. Yeah, it doesn't uh, feel good also. Like being angry doesn't feel good. No, I don't think so. And I think we do have to understand that's an incentive that, you know, there's a reason all of that is happening and why you see what you see. And then when you can see it through that filter, it's okay. I, I Okay. I'm not going to get yeah. it because this is being pushed to me for a reason. And of course the truth is the less you engage with that, the less people like that you follow, you know, sometimes I know people will, you know, follow certain things or watch certain things that they totally disagree with just to get upset and yell at them. Right. <laughs> so maybe, uh, maybe, you know, unfollow some of those. Maybe take a boxing class, you know, <laughs> take a walk. Um, yeah. Um, cause it can be consuming. It can be all know. consuming, especially during elections. I mean, you think back to, I think back to 2016 and 2020 and it was just like, it was all people could think about and talk about. And I was like, there's like a lot of things happening. If you want to impact, like impact your community, like yeah. go help somebody, like volunteer somewhere, like call that relative you haven't talked to that doesn't have a friend. Like there's ways to like spend your time that is not being angry. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of debate going on now about what's happening in the schools and what's being taught and masks or no masks or you know, and that's all, all fine to have those opinions. But, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, you know, there are places in Africa where literally there is not a school for children to attend. Yeah. So, again, just some sort of perspective and some understanding that, you know, folks may not get it right, but they're probably trying to. And it's OK to, to share your view, but let's not, you know, totally demonize the other side. And I think especially TV, what they, they're very good at doing is like finding the one outrageous anecdote that's happening somewhere in, uh-huh. their, in and blowing it that this is like everywhere. And oh my goodness, the world's going to end because everyone is doing this. Well, everyone's not doing this. This one yeah. little community is, or this one person who's noisy is saying that. And so you don't have to get all worked up all the time. <laughs> well, and I hope that people I wish people would utilize technology to listen a little bit more and talk to one another because I feel like so much of like the discourse is because they're coming in and they're not, they're not listening to the other side. It's like they've already decided before they come, they're like, this person is X or I don't agree with Y. I'm not going to have a conversation. And I just would hope that people would like listen a little bit more and be grateful for what we have. And maybe I, I'm, I don't always feel this way. (laughs) Some days I'm like, you really need to listen to me, but 
I think it's important to like utilize the things that are around us and hopefully listen to each other more and have a better discourse, but yeah, maybe that, technology that's... will help that. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Um, you know, one wonderful thing about technology is, of course, you can get access and reach to every opinion on planet Earth. You can, you know, I do I do try, at least like on Twitter, to follow people that I don't always agree with to try to obtain that approach. And I don't do it so that I then I'll go in and yell at them, but at least get those those views. But I think most people in their own family life and their work life, you know, do have, I hope, have exposure to uh, other views than their own. Yeah. Um, like you said, everyone, you know, I think listening is a highly underrated uh, skill in in life and career and in relationships. And that can certainly go, go a long way. But yeah, I, I think we all make a huge mistake if we cocoon ourselves off into only people who think. Oh, 100%. Like yeah. Us. And, and you're right. Technology can be used to do that. It also can be used to, to broaden our aperture. I mean, here's hoping people do that. Maybe that's going to be everyone's good news from this. That's the lesson for today. <laughs> Andy, anything else you want to share before we, we wrap up? Oh, it's, I mean, now I got to think of one. Shoot. <laughs> okay, closing thought. All um, right, closing thoughts. Closing thought, yeah, no. I'm excited about, about where we are in society and where we're going on, on technology. It's Again, it's not to say there aren't aren't downsides, but, you know, potentially the next time you and I are on a podcast, we could walk out on the street, push a button, uh, drive to each other's house and do it in person. Ah, oh, be amazing. I'll bring my mic. Maybe not Nancy. Maybe Nancy can drive like Toon Sister Cat from Saturday Night Live. I mean, Nancy, you gotta, you gotta start learning technology. We'll get to that. That's on next week's episode, everyone. It's always good to take a step back, and this conversation reminded me to both appreciate technology while thinking about its impacts a little more. If you liked, please share with a friend and family, subscribe, leave a review, and join us next week for another episode of the Your Good News Podcast.